Good afternoon. Happy Saturday. Recently I did a video on Deborah Rogers and her petition for habeas corpus and I pointed out that she did it on the wrong form. I assumed that the court would figure it out and not... Eh, it's on the wrong form, but whatever. Um, you did enough allegations. I said that uh, she should have named the person having custody over her and not Cherokee Nation. And I said that the correct, uh, the correct statute to seek habeas was under 25 U.S.C. 1303. The privilege of the writ of habeas corpus shall be available to any person in a court of the United States to test the legality of his detention by order of an Indian tribe. And we have some news on that front. Uh, the first thing uh, is that they did actually name Jason Chenol. Cheno, I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, he is now the respondent along with the Cherokee Nation Supreme Court, and they terminated the Cherokee County Detention Center. Phenomenal. We got, we got one right. Uh, the second thing is it was on the wrong form, but the court is actually going to make her correct it. Uh, she has 21 days to submit a proper habeas corpus petition pursuant to 28 U.S.C. 2241. Now, I said it was going to be 25 U.S.C. 1303. They say it's 2241, 28 U.S.C. 2241. Now, I am all sorts of dumb, and this is not my bailiwick. I am just a first-year family law attorney. So here is, here is what I have done. I have looked stuff up. Um, so they, the court cited Walk v. Edmondson as the uh, case stating that she needs to use 28 U.S.C. 2241, and all sorts of stupid. I I don't exactly know what I'm what what the court's rationale is, uh, but the court cites Walk versus Edmund Edmondson, which deals with Oklahoma. I'm just gonna give me a big blue bar there. So this is this guy was uh, he was in custody of the state of Oklahoma. So, so this is a state claim, pre-trial for a state issue. Uh, the the 2254 is for after the after trial, post-trial relief. Uh, 2241 would be pre-trial relief. That's according to uh, Walk versus Edmondson in the Tenth Circuit. The uh, the cases that Walk cites to support its position that uh, a state court defendant, again, state court defendant, attacking his pretrial detention should bring a habeas petition pursuant to the general grant of habeas authority contained within 28 U.S.C. 2241. See Green versus Wetzel. This was an Oklahoma case. Fuller versus Green. That's Oklahoma. Gold v. Colorado, that's Colorado. These are all state cases so far. And then they say that their sister circuits have reached uh, the same result in challenges to pretrial detention based specifically on double jeopardy grounds. And there's Stowe v. Uh, Mur Murashige. That's a Hawaii decision or a Hawaii case. So it was a, it was a state uh, detention. Jacobs versus McAutry, that was a Wisconsin case. Stringer versus Williams was Texas. And Palmer versus Clark was Nebraska. So none of these are, are dealing with an Indian seeking a writ of habeas for pretrial detention from an Indian tribe court. So... I'm just going to tell you my best guess. I did find uh, two Ninth Circuit cases, uh, Cauliflower and 
something like something Yakima tribe or, or some, I, I forget the names of them. Um, but they dealt with 2241 habeas petitions before 25 USC 1303 was codified. And the rationale in the Yakima one, well, they both said that, yeah, 2241, a, an Indian can bring a 2241 petition for, uh, for pretrial, or I think actually one was already, uh, one had already been convicted. Anyway, the rationale in the second one was that uh, a Indian tribe is basically part of the federal government. They're, they're kind of one in the same. Now, I don't know if that, if that would, uh, that rationale would last in today's day and age. This was, this was from a long time ago. This, uh, that case was decided right after the Indian civil rights act was passed. So the, uh, the, the, the conviction that, and the, uh, petition for habeas had been filed before, I believe. So that was one. And then the other thing was that uh, you can petition for anything if you're being in custody for a violation of the Constitution or the laws or treaties of the United States. So, so here's, here's my best thought. Here's my best thought. Uh, the court is thinking that... She, Deborah, Deborah, excuse me, Deborah Rogers has been granted these constitutional rights that, that apply to her relationship to the tribe. And one of those, and this is again, just a guess, is that the tribe cannot deprive her of liberty or property without due process of law and holding her and trying her if it lacks jurisdiction over her would be in violation of this due process of law. That's my best guess as to what the court was thinking from this fairly limited uh, statement that they, the court made in a minute order. So I believe that is the method by which the court wants her to challenge it. And, uh, you know, I, I can't say that the court's wrong. So I, I must, I must have made a mistake when I said it was a, she should have done a 1303 habeas petition. So there you go. And my dog is looking at me expectantly like he wants to go for a walk. So thank you for watching and have a great day. Oh, also she still has to, uh, with 2241, she still has to uh, exhaust her remedies. She specifically has to exhaust her remedies. There's lots of case law on that. And as you can tell, she still has a, an appeal pending with the Supreme Court, Cherokee Nation Supreme Court. So uh, she has not exhausted her remedies. So I don't think that, that she is going to uh, prevail on her writ of habeas corpus and that it will be dismissed for uh, lack of exhaustion. So thanks for watching and have a great day.